Hello, Rob Vane here, and in this video we're going to be looking at Denise Gamza Ergovan's film Mustang, the first film we're going to be studying for Component 2, Section A Global Film. Now, as you can see for Global Film and Component 2, we're looking at the core study areas only. So this means media language, context, and audience response. So, let's stop at this point, pause the video, make some notes. So as you can see, Mustang was made in 2015, directed by Denise Gamza Ergovan. It's a French, German, Turkish, Qatari co-production, and it was distributed in this country at least by Artificial Eye. The language is Turkish. It won a lot of awards. It won in Cannes, the Europe, Europa Cinema's Label Award. It won a bunch of César awards because it's principally a French movie. So it won Best First Feature Film, Best Original Screenplay, Best Editing, and Best Original Music. It was also nominated, as you can see, for... Uh, the Academy Awards for Best Foreign Language Film in 2015. Didn't win, but it was nominated. Let's make a note of that. So, as you can see, premiered at the Director's Fortnight section of the 2015 Cannes Film Festival. It won the Europa Cinema's Label Award. It was selected as France's submission and was nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film at the 88th Academy Awards. It was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and it received nine nominations at the 41st Cesar Awards and won four of them. As we said, Best First Feature Film, Best Original Screenplay, Best Editing, and Best Original Music. As you can see, there are Alice Winnicott and Denise Gamza are given following their original screenplay Cesar win for Mustang. So, um, unusual in the films that we've done so far, and this was actually directed and written by women. Um, the other films we're going to be looking at with female creators at the core of them, of course, is Stories We Tell. Now, I'm not expecting you to remember the actors' names. I can't even pronounce them. I'm not going to attempt to butcher them. But, you need to make sure you know the characters' names. So we've got Selma, Essay, Lale, Nur, and Sonne. To be honest, I do struggle to tell some of these girls apart at some points in the film. They do have a very similar look. Um, Nur and Selma and Essay in particular. But I would probably print this picture off and have it in front of you when you're screening the movie. It'll probably make life a lot easier. So make a note of the different characters' names. Or as I said, screen cap this, put it in your notes, or just write them down, whatever. So I pause the video, do that now. Other characters we've got are what I presume was their grandfather, Errol, the villain of the piece, and their grandmother as well. So they haven't, haven't really got a name. She's not even named in the movie. The other character is Yasin. He's their helper and bully boy, really. They bully him around quite a bit. But he is their kind of saviour, is one of the few sympathetic male characters in the film. Now, as we said, one of the core study areas for this global film section is contextual. So you need to understand the political, socio-economic context of Turkey. We're also going to be considering things like representations. Gender in particular will be a, a key one to consider. So we have to have a think about the gender roles and politics that are going on in Turkey. But let's have a look at the, the general situation in Turkey right now. I've got this information from freedomhouse.org, which is an organization that assesses the various countries in the world and it lists them in terms of how democratic they are. As you can see, Turkey is not a democratic country. It is not 
free. It is 32% free. This despite being the fact that Turkey is a country that straddles the border between Europe and Asia. And in terms of Middle Eastern Islamic states, was for a very long time one of the most secular of all Islamic states. This has been kind of rolled back quite a lot in the last few years since President Erdogan has taken control of the country in 2002. So the country has been run by the Justice and Development Party, the AKP, since 2002 and has been showing growing contempt for political rights and civil liberties. It's authoritarian in nature and actually came into power via a military coup. So there was a military uprising that overthrew the democratically elected government and then Erdogan's party took over. And since 2017, there have been changes to the Turkish constitution, which has further consolidated power into the hands of the president, specifically Erdogan. Um, in recent history, Turkey has been at war with the Kurds in Syria which has caused a bit of a problem because the Kurds have been considered allies of the coalition in the fight against um, Islamic State. But they are considered a terrorist organization by the Turks. So, and Turkey is a member of NATO. This has caused problems. So as we can see, Turkey is not considered a free nation. This will have significance for the rest of the movie but it is crucially not an Islamic um, fundamentalist or um, uh, theocratic uh, state it's not a um, religious oligarchy for example so it is notionally at least a democracy even though it's technically not one to put this into context, uh, the UK is the 20th freest nation on the earth, scoring 93% for its freedom in 2021. The United States, which ironically thinks it's the freest nation on earth, was something like 33rd or something when Trump was in power, only getting 83% free. Um, it's quite notable that in recent months, there have been reports that some organizations don't even consider America a full democracy anymore. They only consider it a partial or flawed democracy. So, just a bit of context. The CIA's own think tank is actually considering the United States to be very close to the Civil War right now. Not the Lamy, but there you go. So, that's just contextual. You don't need to know that information. It's just to show you the difference between where Turkey is, and we'll do the same when we do Iran for Taxi Tehran, and where we are. So it's certainly worth making a note of this information here. So pause the video, make some brief notes, but the key thing to take away from here is that Turkey is not a democracy, it is not a free country. Which brings us to gender issues in Turkey. Now, this information is from the Gender Gap Index of the World Economic Forum. This, information, this research was conducted last year in 2021. Now, there are 156 countries listed in the world. And out of those, in terms of gender gap, Turkey is at 133. So to put that in perspective... Turkey, which is the 17th biggest economy in the world, is 24th last country in terms of gender equality. Now, this, of course, has got particular relevance to our film. 40% of Turkish women are exposed to physical and sexual violence at least once in their lifetime, as stated in the domestic violence research by the World Economic Forum. And in 2015, 284 women were killed by their husbands or immediate partners in Turkey. Now, this film, Mustang, is essentially a film about religious-influenced misogyny and about girls being punished 
for their gender and for their sexuality. Just the idea that, you know, teenage girls would want to be in the presence of boys is enough to have them brutally oppressed in this film. So this brings into arguments, consider uh, for those of you especially who do media studies, think about people like Bell Hooks, think about um, uh, Lisbeth Van Zunen, and in this case, a certain little bit in this film as well, Laura Mulvey and the male gaze, in terms of how the girls are being represented in this film. So, particularly I'd make note of these facts and figures, they will be very useful in your essays for backing up your argument in terms of how women are being represented in this film and why women are being represented in that way. What is the message that our director is trying to give the audience? Now, to build on that, Turkish law guarantees equal treatment for women. Women, as well as ethnic and religious minorities, however, suffer varying degrees of discrimination. To be fair, that's true in pretty much every country on the planet. Gender inequality in the workplace is especially common. The women have become a larger part of the workforce since the beginning of the century, so in the last 22 years. The government has shown increasing disinterest, however, in protecting vulnerable individuals from forced marriage and domestic violence. Child marriages often performed at unofficial religious ceremonies are widespread. So then this ties into the religious elements because that's obviously part of their religious culture, which is clashing with the more secular, more, um, I suppose, European side of Turkish culture. The Directorate of Religious Affairs briefly endorsed the practice, suggesting that girls as young as nine years old could marry when it published the glossary of Islamic terms in early 2018. The same document, which was retracted after public outcry, also defined marriage as an institution that saved its participants from adultery. Despite legal safeguards, rates of domestic violence remain high. Police are often reluctant to intervene in domestic disputes and shelter space is both extremely limited and often geographically inaccessible. So what we've got in Turkey is a film in which a bunch of teenage girls are deemed to have been acting inappropriate in an inappropriate manner with some boys, although they were only playing in the, in the sea, and were physically imprisoned in their home and then married off in arranged marriages which lead to some tragic consequences this is a film where girls aren't even allowed to do something as simple as go and watch a football match this also has um, a sort of like a tangential link to taxi tehran which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks so again this is where we bring in the contextual issues to help you understand the film an understanding of the socio-political institutions of Turkey will give you a better understanding of what this film's message is and how you, as an audience, should understand it. Can you enjoy Mustang without knowing this information? Of course you can. But knowing this information does give you a much clearer understanding of what the message of the film is. So, again... You don't need to copy this down word for word, but know that this is a situation in Turkey where women's rights are being threatened and where the situation for young women is getting worse. And that's reflected in our film. Equally, the AKP, which remember is Erdogan's party, considered weakening domestic violence protections as part of a larger effort to dissuade women from seeking divorce. A parliamentary report published in 2016 recommended that women should be required to reprove their partner's violence in order to receive extended police protection. That recommendation was retracted after sparking public criticism. So there has been a great deal of pushback in Turkey against some of these more perhaps religiously motivated misogynistic attitudes and behaviours. 
Now, when we're watching our movie, there are certain things we need to consider. Now, we've got the ideology and the spectatorship. So, what you want to consider this is, how does this film represent Turkey, especially politically and theocratically? Remember, a theocracy is a political system based on, on religion. It is controlled by theocrats, so religious um, sort of like uh, scholars, for example. So we have to consider what this film is saying about Turkey. Now, it's interesting. This is not a Turkish film. It is principally a French film. Would this film be allowed to be made in Turkey? Could it only be made by expatriate directors working abroad? We have to consider, how does this film represent the gender, age, nationality, and social class of the people in the film? Now, principally, of course, this is a film about girls, young teen girls, and preteen in some cases. It is about how women are treated within this country. So age, gender, and nationality are going to be our key things here. We have to consider the binary opposites. Remember Claude Levi-Strauss, binary opposites. What binary opposites are there in the narrative of this story? Male, female, young, old, tradition, modern, religious, secular, etc. And remember, context is important. That's why we've been through the last few slides. What is the context of this film? How was it made? Who made it? Why was it made? How was it being influenced by the political background of Turkey? Now, spectatorship. We have to consider who is the target audience for this film. Now, it's unlikely that this film got much, if any, widespread release in Turkey. This is a film that is principally, I think, aimed at foreign audiences, largely middle class ones, because they're the kind of people who are going to go and see a subtitled foreign language film. So, all right, we aren't Turkish. Some of us aren't teenage girls. Some of you are. Nonetheless, how did you respond to the film? What parts of the film provided you with an emotional response? And what was that emotional response? Was it anger? Was it empathy? Was it sadness? Was it happiness or excitement or, you know, righteous indignation? Whatever. But I want you to think about how it made you feel and how you responded to it. But not just that. Think how were you meant to respond to it? What is the preferred dominant hegemonic reading of this film from a Stuart Hall point of view? Could you have oppositional or negotiated readings? Consider Murray Smith and his alignment and um, you know all that kind of stuff. Think who is your favorite character? Explain why they are your favorite character. Are there any characters you don't like? Why don't you like them? It's not enough to say you just don't like them. You've got to know why you don't like them. Are you meant to like them? Or are you meant not to like them? What were your favorite parts of the film? Which bits did you enjoy? Are there any bits of the film you didn't like? Why didn't you like them? Right? It's not enough to say, I didn't like this film or I like this film. Explain why. And what is it about the film language the cinematography, the mise-en-scene, the editing, the sound, but wider things like the narrative structure, for example. How are all of these things designed in such a way as to provoke a desired response out of the audience? And do you think that that was your, the response that you had or was your response different? Then ask yourself, how does this film compare to other kinds of films you've seen before? Is it something you've never seen the like of before? Is it completely unique? Or have you seen many films like this? Personally, this film reminds me very much of Sofia Coppola's film, The Virgin Suicides, which makes a perfect companion piece to this. And it's well worth having a look at, if you can find it anywhere. Worth checking out. Very similar. Okay? 
One of the other things to consider, of course, though, is the aesthetics of the film. I think one of the, like Captain Fantastic, for example, one of the things that's really great about this film is it looks beautiful. It is stunning to look at. So you can enjoy it on a formalist level, not just a narrative one. So that's another thing to consider. What, you know, what, what, was, what was visually impressive about the film, for example, or orally impressive? So as again, it's worth writing those down so that when you're watching the film, you can be considerate of them as you go along. So I pause the video, make a note. Finally, um, obviously for next week, we've got some more flip learning to do. So make sure that you're doing the research on Taxi Tehran. Go and find the Focus Film Fact Sheet. Go and have a look at the playlist on our YouTube channel and make some notes before you come into class. If you've got any questions, you know where I am and I will see you next one. Bye.